Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, June 15th, 2020. We pray that our time together in God's word today is a blessing to you as you grow in your faith and in your knowledge of Jesus Christ as your Savior. We begin today with a reading from Psalm 51. Be gracious to me, God, according to your faithful love. According to your abundant compassion, blot out my rebellion. Completely wash away my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my rebellion and my sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done this evil in your sight. So you are right when you pass sentence. You are blameless when you judge. Indeed, I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. Surely you desire integrity in the inner self, and you teach me wisdom deep within. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out all my guilt. God, create a clean heart for me and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. We continue to read from the Proverbs of Solomon. Today we will be reading from uh, Proverbs chapter 15. A gentle answer turns away anger, but a harsh word stirs up wrath. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge attractive, but the mouth of fools blurts out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, observing the wicked and the good. The tongue that heals is a tree of life, but a devious tongue breaks the spirit. A fool despises his father's discipline, but a person who accepts correction is sensible. The house of the righteous has great wealth, but trouble accompanies the income of the wicked. The lips of the wise broadcast knowledge, but not so the heart of fools. The sacrifice of the wicked is detestable to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but he loves the one who pursues righteousness. Discipline is harsh for the one who leaves the path, the one who hates correction will die. Sha'ol and Abedin lie open before the Lord. How much more human hearts. A mocker doesn't love one who corrects him. He will consult. He will not consult the wise. A joyful heart makes a face cheerful, but a sad heart produces a broken spirit. A discerning mind seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. All the days of the oppressed are miserable, but a cheerful heart has a continual feast. Better a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with turmoil. Better a meal of vegetables where there is love than a fattened ox with hatred. A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but one slow to anger calms strife. A slacker's way is like a thorny hedge, but the path of the upright is a highway. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Foolishness brings joy to one without sense, but a person with understanding walks a straight path. Plans fail when there is no counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. A person takes joy in giving an answer, and a timely word, how good that is. For the prudent, path, for the, prudent the path of life leads upward, so that he may avoid going down to Sheol. The Lord tears apart the house of the proud, but he protects the widow's territory. The Lord detests the plans of the one who is evil, but pleasant words are pure. The one who profits dishonestly troubles his household, but the one who hates bribes will live. The mind of the righteous person thinks before answering, but the mouth of the wicked blurts out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer. Of the righteous. 
We continue walking with Jesus and his disciples be, between that upper room and the Garden of Gethsemane on this Holy Thursday evening on the night before Jesus died. Jesus continues to speak to his disciples, this time commanding them to love one another just as he has loved them. This is my command, love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore, because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit, and that your fruit should remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you, love one another. If the world hates you, understand that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. They will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they don't know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now they have no excuse for their sin. The one who hates me also hates my father. If I had not done the works among them that no one else has done, they would not be guilty of sin. Now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But this happened so that the statement written in their law might be fulfilled. They hated me for no reason. When the counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father, he will testify about me. You also will testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Pius Parsh was a Roman Catholic priest and liturgical scholar who lived from 1884 until 1954. In our writing for today, we hear his comments on the themes that uh, we focus on during that long green season in the Sundays after Pentecost. The Sundays during the Pentecost cycle develop three great themes. The first is baptism and its graces. We are baptized and grounded in the graces of baptism. Every Sunday is a reminder of baptism and a small Easter. The second theme is preparation for the second advent or second coming of the Lord. It is treated in detail on the final Sundays of the season. The remaining theme, the burden of the Sundays midway after Pentecost, may be summarized as the conflict between two camps. Although we are placed in the kingdom of God, we remain surrounded by the kingdom of the world. Our souls are laboring under Adam's wretched legacy and waver continually to and fro between two allegiances. By these three great themes, the liturgy covers the whole range of Christian life. In baptism, the precious treasure of the Spirit was conferred. Through it, we are God's children and may call God Father. Through it, we have become temples of the Holy Spirit, heirs and brothers of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, baptism has not translated us to a paradise without toil or trouble. Rather, we are sent out into the troubled world to work and struggle. We must guard the holy land of our souls against such hostile attack. We, know, we must learn to know and conquer the enemy, and such is the task that will continue until we have taken our final breaths. The church serves as both the heroine who teaches us the art of warfare and our strong fortress and shield in the conflict. Through Holy Communion, she bestows aid that repeatedly frees the soul from the entanglements of temptation. How does she do this? Courage and strength and perseverance flow from the word of God and the service of the word, and they flow in even fuller measure from the Holy Communion. Of ourselves, we are helpless creatures, wholly unable to withstand the attack. But in Holy Communion, another battles for us. The mightier, Christ, vanquishes the mighty. By means of Holy Communion, we are enrolled in our captain's forces, and thus Christ's battle becomes our battle, and his triumph our triumph, and his wonder and strength renders us invincible. 
Our hymn stanza for today is a stanza from the hymn, Awake My Heart with Gladness. The world against me rages, its fury I disdain. The bitter war it wages, its work is all in vain. My heart from care is free, no trouble troubles me. Misfortune now is play, and night is bright as day. And we pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you all so much for spending this time in God's word with me today. I pray that the Lord richly blesses your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.